Hi, I'm Griffin Johnson, the Armchair Historian. Military history and the history of Germany is a subject that intersects more often than not. Since its inception, the German state has cultivated a strong martial attitude as both a matter of security and national policy. These efforts reached their peak in the early 20th century, as the state became embroiled in two world wars. Ultimately, this led to the dissolution of Germany and its fracturing into East and West, both of which focused on ways to develop their own militaries out of the old Wehrmacht. However, with the days of the Soviet Union coming to an end, the states of East and West Germany soon found themselves at a crossroads, as did their armed forces. Before we continue, I'd like to take a moment to thank the sponsor of today's video, Enlisted. Enlisted is a free-to-play Second World War multiplayer shooter available for PC, Xbox Series X and S, PlayStation 5, and previous generations. With a strong focus on historical authenticity, Enlisted's dynamic gameplay puts the player in the middle of the action by allowing you to command infantry squads, tank crews, and aircraft using historically accurate weapons like the M1 Garand and the M1918 Bar and iconic vehicles like the M4 Sherman and the P-51 Mustang. Command, equip, and customize your own personal squad of soldiers and specialists, and play whole campaigns on epic scale as either the Allies or Axis. Register and play for free using our link in the description below, and join over millions of players from all around the world on PC, PlayStation, and Xbox. Players who register will also receive a huge bonus pack of three days premium time and several orders for troops and weapons. No purchase necessary, simply use our link to register, download, and play Enlisted today. The reunification of Germany is considered one of the most important events of the 20th century, not only for Germany itself, but for Europe as a whole. It showed how two nations, once fractured by polarizing Cold War ideologies, could peacefully reintegrate. For the Bundeswehr, West Germany's military, reunification brought up its own issues. First, the absorption of East Germany's Nationale Volksarmee into the West German Heer swelled the Bundeswehr's total personnel strength to around 600,000, making it the largest in Europe. Soon enough, however, this total plummeted, as much of the staff members included Volksarmee conscripts and short-term volunteers who had completed their service. Officers of the Volksarmee above the rank of colonel were fired and replaced by officers of the Bundeswehr. Other Volksarmee officers were given two-year contracts under probation and in almost every case reduced in rank. Despite such restructuring, some Volksarmee officers were positive about their new role in the military, reporting that the Bundeswehr allowed officers more authority to make decisions and that living conditions for regular Eastern soldiers increased dramatically. Reunification wasn't just an issue of personnel, however. Along with the staff of the Volksarmee, the Bundeswehr also inherited a vast stock of Soviet-built tanks, trucks, and guns numbering in the tens of thousands. Along with this, they were saddled with a huge supply of munitions, including 350,000 tons of ammunition. This soon presented a problem, as this large stockpile of arms violated the Treaty of Conventional Forces in Europe, which dictated arms and personnel reductions. With these restrictions in place, Germany went about the process of reducing its personnel from 600,000 to 370,000, and removing large swaths of military hardware from its stores. Armored vehicles, fighting jets, and ships of the Volksarmee were dismantled, scrapped, or sold as surplus to other nations. With all of the downsizing and renovation of the Bundeswehr, Cold War limitations on the Bundeswehr's capacity to manufacture and possess a wider array of conventional arms were lifted, allowing them to expand or retrofit their arsenal on their own terms. While the Bundeswehr was only allowed to operate in a defensive manner, after 1994, constitutional terms were amended to define defense to also include crisis reaction and conflict prevention anywhere in the world, giving the Bundeswehr far more reach than it ever had. 
Since the 1990s, the Bundeswehr's international responsibilities grew, but spread their shrinking resources even thinner. From 1990 to 2019, defense spending fell by 34%, total manpower by 60%, battle tank numbers dropped from 6,700 to 245, combat aircraft and helicopters from 1,300 to 345. While general military equipment was placed in storage, sold off as surplus, or dismantled for scrap. Since reunification, the Bundeswehr has been deployed across the world multiple times. In 1995, the Luftwaffe experienced combat action for the first time since the Second World War, when six interdictor strike version tornado aircraft, escorted by eight electronic combat reconnaissance tornadoes, took part in Operation Deliberate Force, a NATO-led air campaign against Bosnian Serbs around Sarajevo during the Balkan conflict. The Luftwaffe would later take part in the Kosovo War under NATO leadership in 1999. Noted among the British press with the Sun using the headline, Luftwaffe and the RAF into battle side by side. Throughout the 1990s and 2000s, the German army, the Heer, has been deployed in numerous countries throughout the world, including Somalia, Bosnia, Albania, Kosovo, Macedonia, East Timor, Afghanistan, and finally again in Kosovo with NATO. At the same time, the Deutsche Marina, Germany's navy, has been active in the NATO blockade of Yugoslavia, anti-terrorism actions in the Middle East, anti-piracy operations in the Horn of Africa, and several operations throughout the Mediterranean. Beyond operations in the Balkans, the Luftwaffe has also seen action in Afghanistan, Iraq, Syria, and most recently, Mali. Currently, there are more than 2,000 Bundeswehr soldiers deployed on missions around the world, mostly under the leadership of NATO or the United Nations. Since 1994, the Bundeswehr has lost about 100 troops in foreign deployments, most in Afghanistan. As part of its obligations to the NATO alliance, Germany has been maintaining a number of partnerships with several neighboring countries. Since 1989, the Franco-German Brigade has operated under the supervision of a French and German partnership within the multinational Eurocorps, and still operates today. Dutch-German military cooperation has also been very strong ever since the establishment of the German Netherlands Corps headquarters in 1995, with the two commands often relaying responsibilities of several armed service branches to each other. More recently, Germany has formed integration initiatives between its military and that of Czech, Romanian, Norwegian, and Polish armed forces. After reunification, the infantry of the Bundeswehr made use of the G3 assault rifle as part of its standard issue equipment, alongside a common use five color Flektarn camouflage uniform. Despite several changes in the uniforms of the Bundeswehr, the Flektarn camo pattern barely changed, with the only major alterations coming in the form of patterns such as the Tropentarn camo used in Afghanistan and Mali. In 1997, the Bundeswehr began replacing the G3 with the more modern G36 assault rifle, but later found that the G36 came with several issues namely a lack of range and penetrating power, along with accuracy problems as a result of overheating. These issues led the German military to pursue the adoption of the HK416 in 2019, with the here intending to be fully equipped with it as standard issue between 2024 to 2029. In terms of vehicles, the Germans are looking to replace their Martyr infantry fighting vehicles, which had been in service since 1971 with Pumas. More notably, the Leopard 2 tank fleet of 266 is set to be increased to 328 by 2025. Since their agreement with Eurocopter was made in March 2013, a total of 51 Eurocopter Tiger UHs are in service with the HEER. Within the Luftwaffe, a variety of aircraft spanning multiple combat and support roles are in active service, including the older Panavia Tornadoes and Eurofighter Typhoon combat aircraft.
In a post-Cold War world, the downsized Bundeswehr found itself with little need for large-scale conscription. As a result, the demand for conscripts fell, and the military's heightened medical standards would keep the pool of potential recruits intentionally small. By 2010, conscription had been shortened from 18 months to just six. Many military officials criticized the shortened conscription period and were concerned that full abolition of conscription would lead to recruitment shortages. Inevitably, the reforms led to conscription being suspended by July 1st, 2011. From here, the army transitioned into a professional army of volunteer recruits. In addition to the change in the number of personnel, the Bundeswehr underwent another important change in the composition of its staff. Beginning in 1993, women were permitted to serve as enlisted personnel and non-commissioned officers in the medical service and army bands. Over the years, opportunities for women serving in the military have expanded further. Since 2001, women have been able to serve in all roles of the armed services without restriction, in part thanks to differing requirements in physical performance, which make up the military's basic fitness test. Since 1996, Germany has had its own special forces, the Kommando Spezialkräfte, or Special Forces Command. The commando was formed after German citizens had to be rescued from the Rwandan genocide by Belgian para-commandos in 1994. Further reforms in October 2000 led to the establishment of the Joint Support Service to concentrate military police and other supporting functions such as logistics, supply, and communications under one command. This became the fourth branch of the military. A fifth branch, the Joint Medical Service, was also created for the reorganized medical support within the military. As of 2021, however, the Minister of Defense published a plan to dissolve and reintegrate them into other military branches. Lastly, there is a Cyber and Information Space Command, the sixth branch formed in 2017, and tasked with commanding the cyber, IT, military intelligence, geoinformation, and operative communication units of the Bundeswehr. Throughout this period, the Bundeswehr continued to be downsized even after suspending conscription. In late 2004, the last unit of Naval Bundesmarina Tornados was disbanded, with the entire maritime combat role reassigned to the Luftwaffe. In September 2014, the Bundeswehr acknowledged chronic equipment problems that rendered its armed forces unable to deliver its defensive NATO promises. Dysfunctional weapon systems, armored vehicles, aircraft, and naval vessels were considered unfit for immediate service due to a neglect of maintenance, along with serious equipment and shortages of spare parts. A major contributor to this downsizing can be assigned to Germany's heightened standards of practice, with inspection standards often leading to equipment being designated as unfit over minor issues. When it comes to bureaucracy, reviewing conditions, and the procurement of equipment throughout the military, the German system is regarded as both slow and at times dysfunctional. Ordering replacement equipment can take years, not only for tanks and ships, but also for more mundane items. It took Germany about a decade just to deliver new battle helmets for its forces. One reason for these setbacks lies in laws that allow the losing bidder for a defense contract to challenge the decision in court, which can stall a delivery for years. The German military budget is renegotiated every fiscal year, and money that has not been spent by the end of the year is essentially withdrawn. This leads to delays and underfinancing. As a result, the Bundeswehr has somewhat of a reputation for wasting money. When Ursula von der Leyen was Minister of Defense between 2013 to 2019, she was accused of spending hundreds of millions of euros on consultants alone. After Russia's annexation of Crimea in 2014, Germany announced an increase in defense spending. Whether this was retaliatory or implemented as a measure of caution isn't certain, but in May of 2015, defense spending was announced to be increased by 6.2% over the next five years in an effort to modernize the military. 
the 2015 reform set a required strength of 185,000 soldiers. Plans were also announced to significantly expand the tank fleet to a potential number of 328, order 131 more boxer armored personnel carriers, increase the submarine fleet, and develop a new fighter jet to replace the aging Panavia Tornado. In May 2016, the German government announced it would spend 130 billion euros on new equipment by 2030, and add nearly 7,000 soldiers by 2023 in the first major German military expansion since the end of the Cold War. In 2020, Germany increased its military spending by 5.2% to 52.8 billion euros, or 1.4% of the nation's GDP. This was 28% higher than in 2011, when it was 1.2% of the GDP. Yet despite these extensive reforms, a new crisis would evolve that meant today's German military spending would increase more than ever. On February 24th, 2022, Russia invaded Ukraine, escalating the conflict which began in 2014. As Russian troops and armored divisions poured over the border, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz shocked the world when he announced that Germany would meet 2% of their GDP benchmark required for NATO. This vastly increased spending would make Germany the third largest military in terms of expenditure at around 76 billion euros, leaving them only behind China and the United States. Additionally, Schultz also assigned a special fund of over 100 billion euros on top of the annual budget to modernize and expand the Bundeswehr further. One of the biggest costs involved in this budget will be for the brand new Lockheed Martin F-35 Lightning II, which would allow Germany's older model aircraft to be replaced in one major restructuring. Heavy transport helicopters, armed drones, warships, submarines, and air defense systems are also on the list of equipment to be replaced. The Bundeswehr also plans to use the expanded budget to enhance its research and development efforts, particularly in coordination with allied nations such as France, Spain, the Netherlands, and Israel. While the German reserves have also seen increased applications since the start of the war, it could take up to eight years for the Bundeswehr to muster its full potential. The German government hoped that by 2031, the German military would have eight fully equipped brigades, but not a single brigade was 100% ready for action in 2020. Fully equipping the brigades is costly, with the army estimating that the price for a single brigade being 5 billion euros. Responding to Schultz's announcement, former military advisor to Angela Merkel, Eric Vaad, remarked, The Bundeswehr is in a very bad situation. We have fewer tanks than Switzerland and fewer ships than the Netherlands. The Air Force is a little bit better. We have the smallest navy in our history. In that context, this 100 billion is not a very high amount of money, but we need it to strengthen our military capabilities. By German standards, a single combat-ready division must consist of roughly 10 to 15,000 troops. Today, the Germans do not have a single combat-ready division. Less than 30% of Germany's naval ships are fully operational, and many of the country's fighter aircraft are unfit to fly. During exercises in Lithuania, German soldiers used analog radio equipment that was not encrypted and had a shortage of ammunition and other equipment. While Olaf Scholz's announced expenditures make it clear that Germany is making strides in reforming itself, they have a long way to go. Between the expectations of their NATO partners and the threat of diverging interests from rival states, after decades of neglect, it will be many years before the Bundeswehr can become the military powerhouse that it strives to be. Thank you again to Enlisted for sponsoring today's video. Use our link in the description to download the game, get your exclusive bonus, and play Enlisted for free on PC, PlayStation, and Xbox.